Welcome to part three of Lecture 15 of Aerospace Propulsion. So the answer to the question we left off with is that basically the deviation is lower because the boundary layers are thinner, right? We have favorable pressure gradients in turbines and these mean that the boundary layers tend to be very thin. So the effect of camber line of the blades typically is actually like what the geometric camber line is. But in compressors, the adverse pressure gradient yields very thick boundary layers, particularly on what we call the suction side of the blade or the, the side that has a lower static pressure. Then viscous decambering tends to yield a reduction in the effective camber and this leads to, to an increase in deviation. So let's talk a little bit about uh, compressor blade design and operating conditions. Um, modern compressor blades tend to have more of the curvature near the leading edge and less curvature near the trailing edge. This can reduce the deviation to one to two degrees normally. Um, and low speed incompressible flow uh, increases the incidence tolerance of the blades, whereas at high Mach numbers, um, modern blades have, can have very narrow operating, ra operating ranges of inc incidence angles, sometimes only a few degrees. So the text proceeds to keep our lives simple by assuming that the incidence and deviation are zero. There's really no simplification associated with choosing the incidence to be zero. This is a design choice and choosing it to be zero is fine. Uh, choosing the deviation to be zero is clearly not accurate, but if the deviation is only one or two degrees, it's a pretty good assumption for the purpose of simplifying our analysis a little bit. Um, we may revisit the implications of this in, in an extra problem I might add in, in an upcoming homework. A common design cho choice for, for axial turbo machines is to assume, or, or to design for, I should say, the axial velocity to be constant throughout the whole machine, as well as through each blade row. There's really no reason this has to be the case. This is just something that we tend to do to make the, the designer's job easier. And if we have constant axial velocity, um, then the overall velocities are just going to be related by the flow angles. So the velocity is going to decrease in compressors and increase in turbines. Now we consider each blade row in its own frame of reference. Um, if we're dealing with stators, we deal with the stationary or absolute frame of reference and a relative or moving frame of reference for rotors. Um, so let's first consider turbines. These are a little easier to think about. What we see here in this picture are the streamlines relative to each blade row. So in the stator, these are absolute streamlines. In the rotor, these are relative streamlines. The velocity uh, increases in the frame uh, of reference that's fixed to the blade rows for turbines. So the, the rotor is moving in the same direction as the tangential velocity out of the stator. Um, this means the relative velocity into the rotor is less than the absolute velocity out of the stator. So we can then accelerate the flow again without the velocity becoming too high. And the same, it, uh, but the opposite thing is, is true for the flow going out of the rotor and into the next stator. So it's this reference frame switching that allows us to continuously accelerate the flow in a sense without the actual velocity magnitudes growing continuously. Um, a little bit of nomenclature here for the quantities in our various frames of reference. So absolute quantities we'll just call sort of V2 whatever V theta 2. The, which is the tangential component. Um, relative frame quantities, we'll use the superscript rel. And the axial and radial velocities, the static temperature and pressure, and entropy are invariant quantities with respect to our reference frame um, in our engines, um, whereas the stagnation temperature and pressure do depend on reference frame. The Euler turbine equation is the fundamental equation of turbo machinery and relates the work and flow turning. We did see this in Aero Fundamentals, but I want to introduce it again now. Um, so we'll consider some stream tube in this sort of non crosshatched area of a generic rotor. The torque associated um, right just from uh, angular momentum theorem is the mass flow rate times uh, R, v th you know, R uh, tangential velocity difference, um, so the angular momentum change. The power is just that torque times the angular velocity. So when we put that all together, we define u, uppercase u, as a blade speed, which is a radius times the angular velocity, 
then we get m dot times u2 v theta 2 minus u1 v theta 1. From thermodynamics, uh, the power is related to the stagnation enthalpy change, right? Uh, the power is m dot delta h naught, because we assume that we have adiabatic uh, flow in our compressor or turbine. Um, and if we combine the two equations for power, we get the oil or turbine equation, which tells us that delta h naught is equal to um, u2 v theta 2 minus u1 v theta 1. In a turbine rotor, the tangential velocity increases, so the flow does work on the turbine, and it's the opposite for compressors. If we make a constant radius assumption, we can simplify this equation significantly. Um, we'll consider our calculations at the mean radius, which is essentially halfway between the hub and casing, and we'll assume that that mean radius will be constant for each stage, but it could change between stages. This is actually a pretty big simplification, especially in turbines, but it's one that um, makes our lives a lot easier. And if we do this, then we pull the U there's no more u1 and u2, u is the, just the number r times uh, the angular velocity and we can pull that out of the parenthesis. The way to non-dimensionalize the velocity, or the axial velocity, is through something called the work coefficient. This actually arises from the Euler work equation, if we non-dimensionalize the whole equation, we can define, first of all, by uh, normalizing the right hand side by the blade speed u squared, that defines something called the work coefficient psi. Sorry, yeah, I'm talking about work coefficient here. Um, and so the work coefficient, if we put those definitions through, is delta v theta over u. And then finally, uh, the other non-dimensional parameter which is related to the, the mass flow or axial velocity is the flow coefficient. And this basically just normalizes the axial velocity by the blade speed. Um, but if we think about density changing through the stages, right, in a compressor, as the pressure rises, the density is also going up. Um, if we want to maintain axial velocity to be roughly constant, we need to reduce the flow area, and the opposite is true in turbines. From experience, um, it has been found that turbo machines operate uh, effectively or efficiently in certain ranges of flow coefficient. The flow coefficient we define as phi, and it's just Vx over the blade speed u. For compressors, it tends to be in the range of 0.4 to 0.75. For turbines, core turbines, maybe 0.5 to 0.65. Low pressure turbines, a little higher, 0.7 to 1.1. That's as far as we're going to go today. After introducing these basics, we'll use this to actually figure out how we would go about designing the blades in the next lecture.